incidence of breast cancer continues to increase annually. Now approximately four to five new cases have been diagnosed per week. The good news, however, even though the incidence is increasing, the number of women dying from this disease has remained at a level of between 9 to 11%, and this has been so for the past six years. This is when you take the number of deaths from cancer, the percentage that has died from breast cancer has stabilized between 9 and 10. That tells us that we must be doing something right. It, this is thought to be attributed to early detection and therefore more treatment options. The Breastfeeding Program, a subcommittee of the Barbados Cancer Society, was launched in June of 2002 with the objective of reducing premature deaths from breast cancer by early detection. To date, the program has done just over 50,000 mammograms and about 4,500 ultrasounds at the same cost to the public as it was in 2002. There has been a great increase in education and awareness aided by the mobile vehicle. The early detection of breast cancer facility was upgraded in 2010 by the purchase of state-of-the-art digital, direct digital mammography unit at a cost of 1.3 million. Recently, Breast ultrasound imaging was upgraded by the addition of a new ultrasound machine with special features to enhance early detection of breast abnormalities and the introduction of ultrasound direct biopsies. These upgrades have brought Barbados to the level of first world countries in breast cancer screening and early detection. These tests have all been done at affordable rate to the public. In October 2013, we will be celebrating breastfeeding program, our fourth breast cancer awareness walk. The first being held in October 1999. We started to raise funds in 1999 <coughs> after the launch of that, after the walk. And the breastfeeding program was launched then, and we didn't have enough money to buy equipment until 2002, when our doors were open to the first month. Funds raised this year for the breastfeeding program will go towards the upgrade of the present archive system for storing mammograms. If we've already done 50,000 mammograms, we need a secure um, electronic storage. And I know some of you would say, why PACS? But apparently, from all the investigations we've made, the PACS system is about the best. It means, therefore, that we will have to archive these things and have them stored in Florida that can be pulled up. You can retrieve um, a mammogram like in seconds, depending on your internet service. And the second thing is, which is an absolute necessity to at the moment, is the purchase of what's called a CAD, which is a computer-aided diagnostic system for aiding the interpretation of mammograms. You see, if the radiologist is going to read 40 mammograms a day, he needs a third eye to look at it and scrutinize it. Now the CAD, what it does is um, when, you, when, when you attach it to the, to the um, monitor, we use high resolution monitors, when you attach it to the monitor, you would actually see areas that are not normal. It enhances it, like a little arrow comes up and points to it. So the radiologist will then have a second look at that to make sure that he's not missing anything. So it's actually that it's been used now a lot in North America because you know where there's such, such high litigation, one has to be extra careful. The only disadvantage of that is that there's a possibility of you over cautious and therefore you'd be probably doing more biopsies. But you know, as a woman, I would rather err on the side of caution. If there's anything that I'm not comfortable with, just biopsy, let me just be sure. And I think that's the way we'll probably be going. Funds raised from the walk after expenses deducted will be distributed between breast cancer charities in the island, including Little Pink Gift, which is an organization that raises funds to supply drugs and necessities to breast cancer survivors. And Bosom Pals, another breast cancer group, which takes care of the survivors. It was formed two years ago, and it was launched in actual fact by the breastfeeding program. They started off with like 20, 25, persons and now they're almost 100. 
It's purely for breast cancer survivors. Other activities during Pink Ribbon Week include presentations on Thursday, October the 10th at 7 p.m. at the Frank Hollywood Hall on ultrasound and early detection of breast cancer. Ultrasound has now moved up quite a, a level in early detection of breast cancer changes. And this will be presented by Dr. Fidel Rampasad, a visiting interventional radiologist who has actually started to visit Barbados, and I think he's been here about five or six times doing uh, breast the ultrasound directed biopsies. The other talk, which is on the same night, um, we thought we'd cater for the men because in the past we've been asked, what about us, what about us? <coughs> so we have a new vibrant urologist consultant from the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, a Dr. Deb Nebrani, who will be talking on prostate cancer. On Friday the 11th, Barbados go pink. We did this last year, and it was great fun to see everybody out in pink. Um, everyone is asked to wear pink to show your support for breast cancer awareness. And later that evening, the candlelight vision in memory of those who've lost their lives to breast cancer. So that's some of the things that will be happening during the Pink Ribbon Week. We're proud to celebrate Breast Cancer Awareness Month with a series of activities in our seven Scotiabank branches. Pink ribbons will be sold in each branch and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in October between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. our customers and neighbors can receive free screenings compliments of Scotiabank. Uh, yes, I said free. The breast screening van, as we call it, or the mobile unit, will be parked outside our Scotiabank Highgate Hall branch every Monday Scotiabank will be every Wednesday starting October 9th and Scotiabank warrants every Friday in October during these times. Scotiabank warrants will also be celebrating its 20th anniversary in October so customers can look out for additional activities at the warrants branch. We urge the community to use this opportunity to have your free screening and the women of Barbados to participate in all the activities planned for Pink Ribbon Week. CIBC has been associated with the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation for the past 17 years in what's known as the Run for the Cure across Canada. And they have raised to date more than 33 million um, US dollars for breast cancer research um, in um, Canada. And they tell us that they started small, like us. Um, we started last year, and we were able to raise enough funds to make um, a, a donation um, to the Barbados Cancer Society and the Breast Screening Program. So we're hoping that we can only grow from here um, up to January. Maybe in a few years, we might be matching with 33 million of our own. Um, last year, 2,300 of our employees uh, their friends and families took part in walks across the Caribbean on the same day as um, several thousand employees of CIBC uh, in Canada took part in the um, Run for the Cure. And um, in Barbados, we had well over 700 people um, taking part. Uh, it was at the garrison, as this one is, and Dr. Jagger and her team joined us for that event. And that was part of our 10th anniversary celebrations. This year, um, we are concentrating um, more heavily on fundraising activities among our staff. And at this point, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Ms. Gracie Elias, the walk manager for Barbados. We have walk managers in all of the 17 countries across the Caribbean where we're we'll repeating this um, particular exercise right through the First Caribbean Network and Canada being the 18th country this year as well. For the month of October, the Barbados Cancer Society Breast Screening Program, in our efforts to raise awareness not only for breast cancer, but in recognition for all those who are cancer survivors everywhere, we will be launching a new Facebook initiative on our Champions in Pink page. And, we're, and the Facebook initiative is titled, Who is Your Champion? This initiative we're encouraging, as Ms. Deborah King would have mentioned, members of the public to post pictures and stories 
all persons they believe to be their champions and representatives of survivors and the carers, and how it has influenced and motivated them throughout their life. We have a number of prizes we'll be offering. We have a mini iPad, a spa treatment at Durham Care, dinner for two at Benini's, and throughout the month of October, as we're going to raise awareness, we'll be offering other consolation prizes as well to the public. The week of activities, we'll be having a dedication service at the St. Patrick's Roman Catholic Church, which begins at 7 a.m. This will be on October 6th, the same day as the National Walk, which starts at 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. We'll be having both a run and a walk this year. The runners will start at 3 p.m. and the walkers will start at 3.15 p.m. And there's a 5K and a 10K and it will be starting at the Garrison Savannah and going throughout Bridgetown, ending at the Garrison Savannah. We'll be also having some entertainment at the end of the walk and run. And we're encouraging members of the public to come out, support the walkers, support the cause, take part in the walk as well, and enjoy the activities that we have planned afterwards. Also, as Dr. Jagger would have mentioned, we're trying to include the men more in the activities. So this year, we also have, in collaboration with Beijing Fusion and Pedal for Purpose, Champions in Pink, where we're encouraging 100 men along with the director, C.D. Cullimore, to they'll be having a ride throughout Bridgetown as well. This will be a two to three hour ride, and they'll be ending at the Garrison Savannah, along with the runners and walkers on October 6th.